A subject that's been coming up quite a bit in shooting and firearms news and social media recently has been police seizing firearms off of firearms holders in the UK. And there's been a lot of debate online about whether or not police are allowed to enter a property to seize firearms. You get a lot of comments from people saying, you know, the guy made a mistake, he shouldn't have let them in. And you get a lot of comments from people saying that they would never let the police into their property, for example, and uh, they would not be seizing their firearms. So I thought it would be an interesting discussion to cover that from the legal aspects of do you actually have to let police into your house if they're coming round to seize your firearms and what the ramifications of that might be because no one seems to be discussing the reality there's a lot of keyboard warriors and online heroes you know spouting nonsense as usual and then there's a lot of sort of very very timid answers the other way as well and as with all things like this it's a fairly nuanced issue so of course if the police come round to your house with a warrant and they've clearly got some evidence that supported them getting that warrant you know they've presented that successfully to a judge that judge has given them a warrant to come into your house if necessary you know without your permission you don't have to open the door if they've got a warrant they will find their way in one way or another and they will seize what they need as evidence or remove firearms etc and this is not particularly what's being discussed um you know people that have had warrants served on them they're normally not complaining about it because it would be a fairly substantial reason for that warrant to be issued and my guess would be that the people that have had those warrants issued against them uh, probably know that they've done something kind of wrong and they're not really going to moan about it after the fact the ones we're hearing about is where police are coming around to someone's house without a warrant and then they're giving a, a reason that they've come around that they've heard that person has acted inappropriately or maybe a neighbor's complained an ex-wife has complained about their behavior and the police themselves have deemed it that they would like to come in and seize the firearms or shotguns and they don't offer up a warrant and of course they ask this kind of thing fairly forcefully you know they're not coming around with uh, smiles and a greetings card and asking very nicely if they can come in for a cup of tea they're making it very clear that they want to come in and seize firearms or shotguns so what are your legal rights in this situation well of course if they haven't got a warrant in theory you could say that you're not going to admit them into the premises and that may have some ramifications firstly if they truly have some belief that you've been behaving in a manner that would be in conflict with expectations on your license and don't forget part of your license involves being a responsible person not being involved in alcohol drugs mental health issues could come up uh, not associating with criminals there's all these kinds of things that come into play when you get that license you know there are expectations on you and if you have given them reason to question some of that of course they're going to want to get to the bottom of it and maybe seize firearms uh, for a liability reason you know to prevent any harm coming to you or anyone else so Without the warrant, yes, you could say that, you know, you're not even going to let them into the property. And the most likely outcome of that would be that you would then have your firearms license revoked, at which point you would be illegally holding the firearms and they would then be able to come back with a warrant. So it's a very, very short term option. The fact that you're not being a reasonable person and, and cooperating with the police is in itself a reason that they could re revoke your firearms license and they can revoke that at any time you know there's no human right to have a firearms license in the uk it's it's a privilege basically that if the police feel that they want to claw that back at some point they can and then they're going to leave it up to you to take that to court and try and win it back there's been plenty of cases where people have 
had their licenses taken away from them for what seemed like quite trivial reasons. But then they realised that you have to go to court to actually get it back. That is a lot of time. It costs a lot of money. So refusing them entry will only be a short term route to actually keeping hold of your firearms. It could be that you wish to choose to push for that direction so that the police have to do things by the book and it's not a voluntary situation. So that is a choice up to the individual because if you volunteer, you know, the police can come in and you volunteer that they can remove your firearms, that could have its own interpretations in court that it could be seen that you were quite happy to surrender those things. Whereas if they were actually removed from you with, you know, against your will that you were unhappy to surrender them and they were taken off you legally, that may be viewed in a different manner in court. So that's something for the individual to consider. And I would personally ask my solicitor for advice on that before I made my personal decision on which way I would go. Now, let's be honest, if the police have come to your house and they've got it in mind to remove firearms, there's never going to be a situation where you say, no, you're not removing my firearms. No, you can't come in. And then they leave and they go and have a cup of tea and they never contact you again. That is completely unrealistic. And that is what I'm seeing in some of the comments. You know, people saying, well, I wouldn't let them in, you know, and then they wouldn't be taking my guns. Unfortunately, they would be. You know, there's no two ways about it. If they've gone to the extent of going to your house to get the guns in the first place, that concern that they have isn't going to go away. So it might be, as far as you're concerned, something trivial, or it might be something where, you know, you know someone's making up, your ex-wife hates you, for example, and you know that she has contacted the police and, get, you know, said some spurious things about you, said that you threatened her when you didn't. All these things are possible. The neighbours may have said that. But the police are going to have to err on the side of caution. They don't know you. They don't know your ex-wife. They're going to have to look at the worst case scenario. With the current political situation and the general thoughts about firearms held by most people, then the police are going to be supported. Even if you didn't let them in, they're going to go back, talk to their superiors, and your licence will be revoked. And you must also bear in mind that in the court case that ensues, if you try and get your license back, that could also be viewed in a certain manner as well. That if you were uncooperative or worst of all rude or even worse still aggressive when the police turn up, this will all be brought up when you fight to get your firearms license back. So that is an incredibly bad idea. You know, whatever you do, be very civil, be calm, be friendly. And if you've made a decision for whatever your own reasons to not allow those officers in, you can do that in a calm and friendly manner. Personally, I would allow them in because I know that one way or another, they're going to come back and they're going to revoke my license if I don't allow them to take the firearms. I would probably ask them very nicely if I can ring an RFD and get the firearms removed to the RFD that evening so that I can ensure that they're safely stored and they're well looked after. I've heard some stories before that they've been stored and then maybe haven't turned up in, in the best state afterwards when they've been stored at police stations or wherever they take them. And there may also be situations, and this has arisen quite often, where the police have turned up to remove firearms and the property owner isn't in, but someone else is. And I actually know three people that this has happened to. And normally the guy is at work, the wife is in the house, police turn up and the wife then lets them in because she knows no better. One of the situations that can occur here is, of course, the police ask the wife how, you know, how they can get the firearms out of the house, and she produces a set of keys for the cabinets, which automatically is not going to go well for you, because as soon as your partner or someone else who isn't a ticket holder knows how to access those cabinets and get those firearms out of safe storage, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So that's going to be on top of what they've already come round to take the firearms away. 
in the situations I'm aware of when the police have turned up and someone's partner is at home but they're not, what has happened is the partner have let the police in, sat them down, you know, listened to what they have to say, explained that they don't have any access to those secure cabinets and then agreed to contact the holder and request that they return home. Sometimes that hasn't always been possible. I know of at least one case where the person was away working overseas and the police then deferred, went off and came back another day when the guy said he would be back and then dealt with him at that point. But depending on the situation, they may also then go off and get a warrant and actually prise the cabinets off the wall or break into them, whatever they need to do to recover those firearms. It's really, really case dependent. If it was a fairly trivial matter that they were talking about, I would imagine they would just come back at a day that was agreed that you would be there. If it was something more serious, they're obviously going to obtain a warrant, but I would be surprised if they hadn't done that in the first place. That's the most likely aspect, is that they're going to obtain that warrant first anyway. So, the bottom line, as a firearms owner, or even a shotgun owner, you have to make those decisions. Those decisions are probably best made in discussion with a specialist solicitor, but you definitely have to ask yourself, you know, what will you do in that situation? I would also sit my partner down and explain that could happen. You know, there's many, many reasons why that may happen. And if the police do turn up, how that's going to be dealt with. That A, your partner shouldn't be overly worried or concerned because no one wants to scare the wits out of their partner. And that you would then instruct them however you see fit. After that, I would then contact my solicitor and we would go from there. Solicitors are very expensive. That's a, another thing that I keep hearing about is people are often shocked when it comes to fighting to get their license back if it's been revoked, the expense that they are going to incur. And to be straight, you're not going to be able to get that expense back. You know, it's not like some court cases you can use a solicitor, you can actually claim your costs back, etc. In these cases, you cannot. So if you pay that solicitor to fight to get your license back, whether you win or whether you lose, you're going to pay that solicitor and he's not going to do it on some kind of free fee basis. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be a few thousand pounds and that's a few thousand pounds that will never come back. So you really, really want to avoid getting into any situations that could lead to the police wanting to take your guns or revoke your license in the first place. So try and maintain great relationships with your exes. Try and keep calm at all times. You know, don't get angry with people on the road. Don't make rude signs at people. Basically, you're going to have to be a model citizen and be very polite and try not to make enemies. Be kind to your neighbours because if you're having constant arguments with your neighbours about the hedge and being on the wrong side or whatever it is and those neighbours then see you walk out one morning get ready to go clay shooting, guess what? They've now got some leverage. They can ring the police, say that you threatened them and you're going to lose your licence straight away. The police don't need to prove that you actually did anything. You know, they can revoke a firearms license just based on the fact they've received information. It doesn't need to go to court. You don't need to be found guilty. You know, I've heard a lot of people saying that, well, they wouldn't take it off me until they've actually proved it in court. They don't have to prove it in court. They can just revoke it. It's a privilege for them to give it to you. And even with the shotgun licenses nowadays, because of the current climate, they were not considered to be a privilege. But believe me, at the moment, if someone had concerns about someone with a shotgun certificate, they would be having their shotgun certificate removed because no one on the police or the judiciary side of things is willing to risk what could happen. And we've all seen in the news what could happen when someone sort of goes mad with these things. It's incredibly, incredibly unpleasant. People in those situations would end up in very serious trouble in their jobs. They're not going to risk that. So even with the shotgun license, which wasn't a privilege, whereas the firearms license was, 
uh, even with that, you are really, really on shaky ground. They're going to easily take that off you and they're going to easily remove your shotguns from you. So I personally would be as cooperative as possible and then I would use a solicitor to fight back after the fact if I felt I was in the right. Obviously, if I'd done something wrong, I would just take that on the chin and I would get on with my life without a firearms or, or shotgun license. But uh, let's hope no one is in that position. There are, of course, legal insurances you can take out. They're going to help you with costs. I really, really advise that people look deeply into which one of those they're going to take. I've heard some real horror stories from members of various different insurance or organisations that have had free insurance along with them and they haven't been supported when it's come down to it. So I rang around, you know, found insurance companies and then spoke to them on the phone about what exactly they offer, what the small print is, and made sure that the policy was something that would support me in the event of someone making a false allegation or in the event of the, the police maybe making a mistake and coming around and, and thinking I'd done something that I hadn't because that can happen as well. Guys, I'm going to keep the comments on to start with. I, these videos always provoke a really crazy reaction. If I start getting a, a bunch of crazy people in the comments talking about Americanized firearms law bringing to the UK and, uh, you know, all this uh, no one's going to prize my gun out of my cold dead hands kind of stuff, I'm just going to turn the comments off. I've had a few people message me lately lambasting me for turning the comments off. Guess what? It's my channel. I can turn the comments off and I'm not going to debate that with people it's simply going to get turned off. This isn't a platform for like extreme opinions about the subject. It's a platform for sensible discussion. And we're going to keep it legal. We're going to keep it polite. And we're not going to be trying to make some anti-governmental situation out of it. If you guys feel that strongly and you've got really, really extreme opinions on that kind of stuff, guess what? You can make your own YouTube channel. It's pretty much free. You just have to get your cell phone, make a, a channel on YouTube and then upload a video. Most people have got a cell phone. So instead of moaning to me about why I've turned the comments off, make your own video, reach your own people and then you can find out the joys of editing comments or not editing them and maybe getting into trouble. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed that discussion. Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you think. Take care. Have a great bank holiday.